Okay, hi everyone, and welcome to my uh, live art live stream. Um, in uh, this video today, I thought that I would uh, kind of show you how I work on a background for a piece that I'm going to be that I'm doing. And so I thought I would kind of do a live stream of this piece so people can see. Um, my progress as I'm going along and see what I'm doing and as you can see um, the reference photo below uh, the video of me is the image that we're going to be working on and then, then the larger image is the actual piece that we will be working on. Today I'm going to basically just be working on the background and then in later streams I will be working on the bee and the flower itself. But in today's video, I'm just going to be working on the background, showing you how I do the background and the process of creating the background with the blurry image. And so just to kind of show you real quick, my setup over here, I basically have my pan pastels, if you can see those right there. These are my pan pastels and then that this is the soft tool that we use and it has multiple uh, tips that you can put on these for blending your pan pastels and then I have my fiber castel color pencils that we will be using later on for doing the detail work as well as other things like that. So that's basically my setup for today. As I said again, we're just going to be working on doing the background for today in today's stream so and there's that that video so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, I'm going to take this soft tool here and I'm just going to replace the tip, but you just pull it off. It's just a little sponge that you can pull off. And I'm going to lay that aside. And in the bottom of each of the containers, they have other tips and tools that you can use in the bottom of the container. And so I'm just going to find the container that has the soft tool that I'm going to use today. And as you can see in the bottom of this one, it has additional ends that we can use. So I'm just going to actually for this video I've decided to go they have a green background here but I don't really like that so I'm going to go with a blue background. I think that will work good with the flower as well as the bee once we get the bee in here. And so I've just put just slid my little tip on here and it just slides on real easily. And then I just put that on. Okay. And then once I have my tip on, I pull out my pan pastel. And each one of these sections is a color. And you just screw off the top, the top color of the one that you want. And you can see there's, there's a dark blue under the green. But I want to go with a little bit lighter blue to start with. You know, that's another green. And you just kind of have to keep opening different ones until you find the one you're looking for. And there we go. And I'm just going to start off with a slight blue. I'm going to set the other one aside. And I'm just going to kind of let me reverse this. I need to have the side that hasn't been used quite as much because I don't want to start with that darker blue. You can wipe these off on paper towel to get the coloring off. And these do last for quite a while. So I'm just going to just kind of just politely rub it over the top of it just to get enough of what I want. And I'm just going to kind of slowly start putting that background in there. And basically these pan pastels work a lot like painting. You use light brush strokes to just put these pan pastels on here because if you 
rub too hard, it does wear these tips out a lot faster. As you can see there where I was rubbing, you can kind of see where it started to wear. be careful around the bee and if you do get a little bit on the bee it's no big deal because we'll be it'll be covered up later on with other colors Just kind of keep layering on the pastels until you get it the way you want it kind of using the tip like a paintbrush to get in there in those little smaller areas trying as carefully as possible not to get any on the actual bee and then you can just pull out the areas that are darker and you can see it'll be blotchy and kind of darker in other areas no big deal you want that blotchy look that's what's going to give you that blurry background is that blotchiness try not to get any in that flower and again if you do happen to get a little bit on one of the images no big deal because you do want a little bit of this coloring in the subject of the piece because you don't want it to look like it was just pasted into the, pe pe the piece. You want it to look like it's actually part of the piece. Put a little bit just in there. Come over here and do this side. Kind of go in some circles, get some variation in there. Okay, being careful, trying not to get as much as possible in those areas where we don't need it. Again, it's just a layering process. You just want to keep getting more pastels, layering it in there in the areas where you want it to go. If you do, again, if you do get an area that you, is too dark, where you laid it on a little bit heavy, just keep working that area and it will lighten it. Again, you just want to continually work and layer it till you get it looking the way you want it to look. It's just a layering area. Again, any type of artwork you're working on is just basically a continual layering. Just continue to work that till you get it to the consistency that you want. Get it. To, and the main thing with pieces is you just want to make sure that your colors, you want to make sure that your darks are dark, your lights are light, because your contrast is what's going to make your piece look more realistic. It's what's going to make it look more vibrant again just continuing to work those areas until you have it looking the way you want ok 
continue to check your reference photo. Always use a reference photo because you, you always want to use that reference photo to help you know where your darks are, your lights are. Okay, now I've got my light blue on there, and now I'm just going to kind of slowly start to darken up some areas because we want to have we want to have some areas where it's looking like as you get further away from the subject of the piece, it's going to get darker. Which my, and as you can see here, I just pulled it off, flipped it over to where the side with the darker blue was at, since I'm going to switch over to a darker blue now. And it just slides, just slides right on there. And then again, just get in a little bit, just barely touching it, just kind of working it. to the areas where I want to get it a little bit more darker, a little more shadows in there. And just using those circular motions to just kind of make it look a little blotchy. Okay, and now I'm gonna I want that to be even a little more darker in certain areas. So now I'm going to switch to black. I'm gonna find my black pastels. Remember which one does it in? going to take the black and you never want to go with just straight black because that will make your piece look really flat so now I'm just going to take this black and just kind of get a little bit of it on there just kind of darken up some areas Going in those circular motions because you want it to look blotchy.
is continuing to work these areas. So I get on this right darkness, right, just the right contrast. I don't want these corners to be even darker because they're going to be like off camera. Just continuing to go back and get more pastels to darken up these areas. Just using little strokes to get the areas that I need. Sorry, I was kind of working off camera there where you couldn't see. Let me see if I can adjust that. There you go. Okay. Just continuing to work that in there. Getting it how I need it. I think that's going to be about it for that. Kind of bring that in a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to take and I'm going to just put a little bit of violet in there. And that's going to really brighten up that black, make it give it some more dimension. Applicator over to where I don't have any of that black. So that I don't get it into my bullet. Just take a little bit and just kind of work that into the area. Continuing to apply that violet color until it starts to give that black a little bit more of a dimension to it so it don't look so flat. that go in circles so we continue to keep that blotchy look Do a little bit more before I file it up in here okay I think that looks that looks good I think that's about what I'm going to do there kind of bring some of this up into here some of this violet color it across the bottom a little bit. There we go. Okay, and that's about everything I'm going to do for the background today. Maybe just pull this in a little bit more. We want to kind of in frame the the B because we want the B to be the focus of the piece. There we go. And again, you just want to use lots of colors. You don't want to go with just a straight black or a straight, it, when you look at something and you say, oh, well, it's black or it's white, 
if you really look really closely at the piece, nothing is ever just a straight white or a straight black. It always has some kind of tint to it, some kind of reflection, because in, in with light, the way light works is whatever environment your subject is in, the light is going to reflect all the things around it onto the, in, onto the subject. So if you just go straight into the subject, it's going to look like you took that, that subject and just pasted it into the background or pasted it into the piece. You always want to pull some of those colors around the, the subject into the actual subject itself. So that way it doesn't look like it's just a pasted image into a background. It looks like it's actually a part of that background, that it was, that it's in the image. It's not just pasted on. And so you just, you always want to look really closely. Always use a reference photo because your brain will trick you because your brain thinks it knows everything. It says, oh, like with a cloud. It says, oh, I know what a cloud looks like. So you go to do that cloud, and then you look at it, and it's like, it looks cartoonish. It doesn't look realistic. So if you have a reference photo of whatever you're working on, and you continually look at that reference photo, look at the lights, look at the darks, look at the contrast. And sometimes if you take a reference photo, it might not be very... Um, very good it might be hard for you to kind of see some of those things so if you put it into like a photo editor and there's lots of those online for free um you can put it into a photo editor kick up that contrast kick up the brightness work with those to where you can get those colors to show and when you do that it makes it a lot easier for you to see all the different colors the different variations and shades and lights and darks in that piece so again you just want to continue you always want to have a reference photo to go by then once you get to a certain point in that piece when you've got just about everything that you that you can use the reference photo for to get your to guide you to help you with your lights and your darks then once you have all of those on there at that certain point then you no longer need the reference photo then it's basically artist discretion you can add highlights you can brighten contrast you can adjust colors you can change colors you can add things just it's basically just the artist preference. What do you think you can do to your piece to make your piece look even better than the reference photo? And so once you get to that point, then you can say, okay, well now I, and you will know when that point comes, when you no longer need that reference photo. Generally with me, I keep it up and even when I've, almost completed the piece I still continue to look at it and say okay well they have this here but and they have it it's this color but I think it would look better in this color you just kind of play around with things and keep trying new things if you can try color if you don't like with color pencils uh, basically any medium especially acrylics they are very forgiving if you put a color down and you don't like it you can paint over it it's no big deal. Um, with pan pastels, color pencil, color pencils aren't quite as forgiving, but same thing with color pencils, pan pastels. You put a color down, you don't like it, get another color. And well, I hope everybody enjoyed following along with me on this, working on this background today. And in my next live stream, we will begin starting working on the flower and the bee. Hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you in the next live stream.